Facing the wrong direction, bro. Woo, that's how you flank, and then I'm getting barbecued. That's how you flank him, baby. YouTube, welcome back, everyone. It's your boy Rump, and I've got two words for you Fort Vox. All right, and we can now play as the French army, so hopefully I can give you a little French spin on it. Let's say that in French, Forte, Voxe. All right, hopefully my French is good. Hopefully you understood it. But this map right here, Fort Vox, is coming from the They Shall Not Pass DLC, and it is a reminder of that Metro Operation Locker gameplay, but it's also a depart from that type of gameplay, and we're going to get into the reasons why and how you might like it, how you might want to play this map, what classes you might want to use, what classes you might want to stay away from. So check out this gameplay. Hopefully you like my review. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can join the gamer family here. Let's get into the gameplay. DICE have still not given us a release date for the They Shall Not Pass DLC, but we know it's coming soon because they did say sometime in March. Also, what we are going to get is four new maps, new game mode, new weapons, the French Army, but one of those maps is Fort Vox, and that's the map I got my hands on, I was playing it, and this is what the map we're going to review right here today. In this video, you're going to see why Fort Vox might be the map for you, you may have to change up your gameplay style, certain things the map has, certain things it doesn't, and what type of gameplay you should expect once this map releases. Before I actually got my hands on the gameplay and I saw a couple screenshots of the map, I just basically said, ah, I, I brushed it off as another Operation Metro from Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, Operation Locker from Battlefield 4, if you're familiar. Those maps basically took place in a subway or, or in, a, uh, in a prison, and they were just really, really tight close quarters gameplay, really action-packed gameplay with a lot of grenade spam, a lot of rocket spam, and it just continuous. It was like a frag fest. And if you really like those maps, like I really love those maps, I'm a huge fan of close quarters gameplay. You will love this map. If you hated those maps, you might still love this map, and we're going to get into why. First of all, if you look down from a top down perspective, Operation Metro and Operation Locker, of course, the, the capture points are in a linear fashion, so they're basically in a straight line. What this led to was a lot of tug of war moments where one team is pitted against the other and they just headed off at one point, and it really boiled down to how many tickets the other team had left and how many medics could revive people fast enough. Because because the flank wasn't really available. On those maps, you didn't really have much option for flanking. On Operation Locker, you could go out in the snow for a few meters, but not really far. And in Operation Metro, you really didn't have much of a flank ability. In Fort Vaux, flanking is key. They, I think the developers really took what they had there from Operation Metro, Operation Locker, and said these guys need to be able to flank. So as you can see from a top-down perspective for Fort Vox, all the capture points are actually in a circle. What does that mean? It doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be able to automatically flank, but the way they set up the map, it basically rewards you for flanking. Every single corridor, there's doors to the right, the left, open those doors you go through there's more doors to the right the left there's always ways to flank stairwells that go down stairwells that go up to give you advantages of height to give you advantages of going down below the enemy pause the flank is there so do not brush this off do not brush this off it's another operation metro operation locker and think that it's only going to be no flanking ability just a straight line it is not that at all so i think they did a really good job of implementing the flank in this map a great job and a great amount of detail was placed into making the map as immersive and as realistic as possible. Not only do you have the really, really good graphics, uh, these darkly lit corridors, uh, but you also have the noise and the sound that draws you in. You can hear echoes of explosions, enemy screams, your teammate screams. They echo through these different corridors, and they all sound different. Go out to an open corridor, you might hear echoes to your right. You'll go through those doors to the right, and there the enemy is. So sound was key in this, uh, in this map, and I really found that playing with sound was an advantage making sure you have that surround headset making sure you either have a sound card or some way to get 360 sound out of the gameplay really really might help you out here also when it comes to the classes and class gameplay this is a fast gameplay mode map this is not a map where you're going to want to sit down and get your get your cheetos out your sniper rifle out and sit behind the couch no this is a map where you're going to want to sit up, get into the gameplay, because around every corner there's an enemy. Around every corner there's a grenade getting thrown. Something you need to pay attention to. So, as far as classes go, I played a lot of assault on this one. A lot of assault, because I've got the Automatico or the MP18. You need to remember, fast-paced gameplay. 
So fast paced gameplay means shotgun, close quarters, those type of weaponry. There were a lot of people playing as support, which I also played as support as well. Support was actually good for suppressing those long quarters, for suppressing those hallways. As far as recon goes, I don't know if recon is really going to be your thing in this map. If you only play recon, this might be the map you may want to skip over. Now, keep in mind, I only played this on Conquest. I do not know if Operations Mode or Frontlines Mode or if the other modes will give you a much larger outdoor area for the map. So keep that in mind as well. But there wasn't too much outdoor area going on in this map uh, as the way I played it. Medic also is obviously a huge class to play on on this one, so keep those in mind as classes are related. Ah, oh, there we go. Snuck up, snuck up on two of them. Let's see, we got any, we got any others over here? Here we go, another one. Got him! Stuck up on four of them, that was fun. If you love the vehicles of Battlefield 1, you may not find Ford Vaux as the map for you. But once again, I only played it in Conquest, but there were no vehicles. Now, it did say on the loading screen that the Behemoth would be arriving uh, if one team was losing by too many points. And we're familiar with the Airship Behemoth or, you know, the Dreadnought, things of that nature. But I don't know. Does that mean the Char 2C tank, the new tank that they say will be released in the uh, DLC? Does that mean that will be the new Behemoth? I was kind of thinking, it can't be because there really isn't too much open area for a tank to really move through. Unless the tank is just plowing through all walls of the uh, the fort, which would just be awesome. As far as piloting goes, if you're a pilot, I don't see much use for you in this map. This might be like Amiens, where you don't have planes actually being being flown by the uh, by the players and only flown by the AI. I don't know, but if vehicles are your thing, this may not be the map for you as I tested on Conquest. This is more of an infantry-focused, infantry-heavy map. And my final verdict on this map is if you loved uh, Operation Metro, Operation Locker, you're going to love it. If you did not like those, you're still going to love it. And the reason why is because the certain things that kind of made a lot of people shy away from Operation Locker and Operation Metro, like the continual inability to flank, the continual nade spam and rocket spam, you don't really have that in Battlefield 1. In Battlefield 1, you only have one rocket, which is the anti-tank rocket. That's number one. And number two, it seemed like I don't know if they weakened it, if they're going to nerf it in this release, but the anti-tank rocket was not as powerful against infantry as I've known it to be previously. I did get a couple anti-tank rocket kills, but they weren't as easy as you might expect. Did a lot of blast damage, but not kills with it. Also, as far as grenades go, yes, there were a lot of grenades getting thrown. This is a close quarters environment. That still is something to contend with. But keep in mind, it's not like Battlefield uh, 4 or Battlefield 3 where it's just a continuous resupply. It takes a while for the grenades to resupply, so it's not as predominant as it used to be. Also, if you loved the gameplay, the close quarters gameplay of Operation Metro, Operation Locker. Once you get your hands on this map, you will start to see as I did, you will start to feel that same type of dark close quarters gameplay that, that we've known and loved. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I cannot wait until this releases. Hopefully it releases soon. Hopefully they give us a release date soon so you can also get your hands on it as well as I'm about to jump right back into it at the end of this video. Have a good one. I'm going to drop two more videos for, uh, for you guys' enjoyment. Thanks for watching.